Hello! In this video, we are going to talk about the pain-sensitive areas of the head. Headache is a very common condition that causes discomfort in the head, scalp, or neck. Going through a stressful situation that you can't control? Headache. Going through hundreds of requirements and their fast-approaching deadlines? Headache. But headache is more than that. Semantically, headache is all aches and pains located in the head. But in medical term, headache is a discomfort in the region of the cranial vault. Headache is classified as either primary or secondary. Primary headache are headaches and the features are the disorders itself. In order of decreasing incidence, the most common is tension type followed by migraine, idiopathic stabbing, exertional, and cluster. While secondary headache are headaches caused by exogenous disorders like systemic infection, head injury, vascular disorders, subarachnoid hemorrhage, and brain tumor. But before jumping to the pain-sensitive areas of the head and the mechanisms of how this pain occurs, let us first have a brief review on the anatomy of the head. The head is formed mainly by the skull with the brain and its covering meninges enclosed in the cranial cavity. The cranial bone includes frontal bone, the parietal bones, occipital bone at the back, the temporal bones, the sphenoid bone, and the ethmoid bone. The facial bones consist of the following, the zygomatic bones, the maxillae, the nasal bones, lacrimal bones, within some of the skull bones are hollow spaces lined with mucous membrane called the paranasal sinuses. These include the frontal air sinuses within the frontal bone, the maxillary sinus within each maxilla, the sphenoid air sinuses within the sphenoid bone, and the ethmoidal sinuses within the ethmoid bone. Now, let's move to the top portion of the head which is enveloped by soft tissue called the scalp, consisting of five layers, the skin, the dense connective tissue layer, the aponeurosis, then the loose areolar tissue, and the pericranium. Now inside, the brain is surrounded by three protective membranes, or meninges, the dura matter, the arachnoid matter, and the pia matter. The dura matter is a dense, strong, fibrous membrane covering the brain that provides tubular sheaths for the cranial nerves as it passes through the foramina in the skull. The dura is followed by the arachnoid matter, a delicate, impermeable membrane. Last is the pia matter, which is a vascular membrane that closely invests the brain. The head is mainly innervated by the cranial nerves 1 to 12. Out of the 12 nerves, the olfactory, optic, and the vestibulo-cochlear nerves are entirely sensory, while trigeminal, facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus nerves are both motor and sensory. With that, which of those structures are likely sensitive to pain? Pain-sensitive areas can be divided into intracranial or extracranial. Intracranially, the sensitive areas are large arteries near circle of Willis, large venous sinuses, dural arteries in parts of the dura at the base of the brain, middle meningeal and superficial temporal arteries, proximal portions of the cerebral arteries, cranial nerves 5, 7, 9, 10, and cervical nerves 1, 2, and 3. The insensitive areas intracranially are the parenchyma of the brain, pia matter, arachnoid matter, parts of the dura matter, ependyma, choroid plexus. For extracranial, the sensitive areas are skin, muscles, fascia, blood vessels, mucosa of sinuses, dental structures, eye, ear, nasal cavities, paranasal sinuses. In sensitive areas extracranially is the skull, except periosteum. So what are the mechanisms behind the pain? There are five mechanisms on how the pain occurs. 
Vascular is when there is dilatation of intracranial or extracranial arteries. Examples of these are in malignant hypertension, also in exertional headaches that happen during sexual activity or weightlifting. These headaches are not that serious compared to other causes of vascular headache. Aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage are very intense and sudden. It is associated with vomiting and neck stiffness. This is identical to thunderclap headache. In cerebrovascular diseases like giant cell arteritis, that affects extracranial temporal and occipital arteries. They are severe and persistent headache and localized in the scalp. Occlusion or dissection of vertebral artery that cause pain in the upper neck or posteroricular area. Basilar artery thrombosis. Myogenic. This is due to persistent contraction of the muscles of the head and neck. Examples are headaches of ocular or region. They are steady and aching They are due to prolonged use of the eyes. Examples are hypermetropia and astigmatism wherein there is sustained contraction of extraocular, frontal, temporal, and even occipital muscles. Distortion or traction. This is mainly due to increase in extracranial pressure resulting to traction of pain-sensitive areas. Examples are lumbar puncture and spontaneous low CSF pressure headache. It is a steady occipitonocal and frontal pain. It happens within a few minutes after arising from recumbent position and is relieved by lying down. Headaches that are aggravated by lying down or lying on one side occur with acute and chronic subdural hematoma. They are dull and unilateral and worse early in the morning. Inflammation. This can be caused by infection, hemorrhage, or chemical irritation. Examples are infection or blockage of paranasal sinuses. On the other hand, headache of meningeal irritation have an acute onset. They are characterized as severe, generalized, deep-seated, constant, with stiffness of the neck. And lastly, we have referred pain. Pain that is perceived at a location other than the site of the painful stimulus or origin. References site of pain includes distension of the middle meningeal artery, back of the eye, and temporal area, intracranial segments of the internal carotid artery and proximal parts of the middle and anterior cerebral arteries, eye and orbitotemporal regions. Trigeminal nerves convey impulses from the forehead, orbit, anterior, and middle fossae of the skull, and the upper surface of the tintorium. Sphenopalatine branches of the facial nerve convey impulses from the nasoorbital region. Ninth and tenth cranial nerves in the first three cervical nerves, inferior surface of the tintorium and all of the posterior fossa. So in summary, we look at the headaches that can be primary and secondary. A brief overview of the skull and sinuses as well as the mechanisms of headache.